Welcome back to Gunshots everybody. Well this week we have another automatic and this week it is the Beretta A400 Axel multi-target. The uh, adjustable cousin to the A400 XL. Um, as you can see it's a very well presented gun. I think it's um, certainly visually striking. The, uh, the silver receiver, uh, the nicely figured wood and obviously the very high rib certainly set this gun apart from a lot of other, well pretty much any other auto on the market that I can think of. Apart from the Fab Arm, I believe the XLR5 um, is also very pretty and quite unusual looking. This being the adjustable version of the XL, it has the BFAST rib and the BFAST uh, Monte Carlo stock. The BFAST system, if you've seen any adjustable Beretta, works exactly the same. You've got um, Allen bolts that hold the core in position for moving it left and right and a set of shims for lifting it up and down. Uh, the BFAST rib uh, is adjustable using this small um, knurled screw which allows you to lift and drop the rib as you wish with this uh, scale at the front end that allows you to see how much you've lifted or dropped it um, so that you can move your pattern up and down. Um, as I said at the moment with me looking straight down the rib pretty much figure eight from, with a mid bead um, it shoots point of aim uh, you can then of course drop it and lift your, uh, your pattern up. Um, the rib itself is uh, tapered ramped with a, a mid and, and front bead um, and it, um, it certainly holds the eye very well and it's quite striking, it's um, not something you're going to miss. Ergonomically this gun is slightly different to the standard one, I think the, uh, the pistol grip is a little bit better shaped, it allows you to reach the trigger better. Um, it definitely isn't as much of a stretch for me anyway to get my finger around the trigger as I find on most automatics. Um, the controls on this gun are outsized so you've got a very very large um, bolt release and the operating handle is this um, rather large um, tapered affair. Um, it's generally very very easy to manipulate the gun and very very easy to use. Um, Balance wise you've got um, balance weights on the far end that you, know, you can ch change those out and have the gun uh, balance the way you want it to and it definitely balances well. It mounts well, it points well and you can certainly get the fit that you want out of the gun with the amount of adjustability that's built into it. Um, negatives. Uh, to be honest this, um, this operating handle is one of the negatives, it, you wouldn't think it but putting this away in your cabinet when you're a UK shooter with a limited amount of space in there um, it almost doubles the width of the gun and generally it makes it quite awkward to put away um, a bit of a, a pain for me I thought anyway um, when I've got a, a few guns in the cabinet it's a, it becomes a bit of a, a pain in the bum to actually put it away and the other one and this might be a bit of a niggle it might not bother you at all is this That ringing noise that you can hear um, really bothered me. If you are, um, once you've got the gun mounted, you are getting bone conduction through your jaw, and that ringing noise is quite uh, strident, shall we say, in your head. It, it bothered me, it might not bother you, but when I'm used to shooting uh, or use, that felt like a lot of, a lot of commotion, shall we say, on the shot. Although, what, 100 cartridges in, I'd sort of gotten used to it, I was still conscious of it. Um, it's a minor point but it's it's something that, 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 that bothered me anyway. The gun itself is, um, it's absolutely fine, it, as autos go, um, I'd still, brutally honest, I'd, I'd give preference to the Benelli that I tested a little while ago, but as Beretta autos go, it's probably the best one I've shot. Um, the trigger is still a semi-auto trigger, it is what it is, but it's not horrendous, it's definitely better, although it does have quite a lot of travel. Um, it isn't graunchy and it does break fairly consistently. I didn't have the usual problems that I get when I shift to an auto and the graunchy triggers. Sometimes you get a little bit of trigger stall or you think the gun's got off. It does go off when you expect it to, it's just got a bit more travel than I'm used to. I mean, it's easy to manipulate, those big controls definitely make a difference. Uh, the standard A400, I find the uh, the bolt release knob is, is quite small and requires quite a lot of pressure, so that's definitely a, a big plus, but it, is, it should be noted. Um, I did find that when I'm manipulating the gun, I have managed to accidentally close the bolt a couple of times I didn't mean to. Um, didn't cause me any problems, but something to be aware of, you're going to have to get used to it, that you can't um, accidentally tap that or grab the gun by the receiver as you will potentially drop the bolt. So let's talk about what's in the box. 
Uh, the standard Beretta ABS case, if you've had pretty much any Beretta um, semi in the last, I don't know, five years, you've probably seen one, it's a grey ABS case. In there you get a set of shims for the BeFast comb, um, uh, an Allen wrench for loosening the comb off so you can um, change the height and the uh, left to right position. Uh, you get three chokes, uh, this gun came with quarter, half and three quarter. Uh, you get a rod that you can put into the magazine tube to limit the gun so that you can't put um, any cartridges in the magazine. I'm presuming that's for single barrel competitions in the States. Um, you get uh, some oil, a choke key, the usual stuff. Uh, obviously all your, your books um, and that's about it. It's, a, it's an A400. If you've, uh, if you've seen one before, you've more or less seen the box for this thing. It's, it's not... Um, not, nothing revolutionary in the box. Um, I think in conclusion, for all I, I've enjoyed shooting this gun, it, it, it shoots well, it mounts well, moves well, definitely very very low, low recoil, quite pleasant to shoot, great fit. Um, I do feel like this is almost a, a, an answer without a question. You're probably not gonna get away with shooting trap with this gun in this country. I, I can't think of a trap layout where you the guy next to you is going to be happy with you shooting a semi. Um, but it's just, uh, I, that's uh, not a trap shooter, it's worth noting. Um, there may be trap layouts where semis are, are totally cool, but um, I don't know, I, I feel like this is very much a gun for the American market. Um, certainly I've shot sporting and sport trap and skeet with it, shot it quite well. No problems with that, it's just, um, I think once I'd set it up, with the point of aim being 50-50, I, kind of had no need to change it, therefore not really sure I need that adjustability. At £1800, obviously it is going to be at the high end of the semi-auto market and I don't know, I think it's very much going to be a choice of somebody who wants something that looks really unusual um, and it is quite a striking gun, uh, definitely with that with that high rib and the, uh, the nicely sort of finished aluminium receiver. Um, it's going to be down to really, if you want something that shoots like this, between this and the Fab Arm XLR5. Not sure which one, having not tested or shot an XLR5, not sure which one I would choose. It is what it is, it, it, it's an A400, they are very very well regarded, and I have no issues with it mechanically at all. Uh, would I buy one? No. Uh, it, it's not the gun for me, just simply because it doesn't answer any questions or doesn't do anything that I need a, a semi-auto to do. But having said that, nothing against it. It is, um, aside from the noise and the width, <laughs> um, it is a, is a, it's a nice gun to shoot. Um, all right, so thanks very much for watching everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it again. Um, I will obviously see you in a couple of weeks time. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed the, uh, the episode and um, we'll see you next time.